the process that you learn from the center will change your life. And it'll change your life by giving you the tools to change others' lives. You know, we're teaching people how to improve health. For a lot of years, universities thought that it was good enough to invent something and you could kind of throw it over the fence and the business world would take care of it. That is a flawed process. You have to understand uh, the, the various factors that are going to affect your invention uh, before trying to launch it. That has to be built into the discovery or the invention. If you don't understand the patient experience, or you don't understand the doctor experience, or you don't understand the family's experience, it becomes really hard to invent something that'll be accepted by all of the major stakeholders that are around the problem that you're trying to solve. That interplay uh, of all of those stakeholders uh, is incredibly complex. This program gives you a much broader, higher level understanding of all of those puzzle pieces that are required. You're brought in to understand what the root problem is, and only once you understand that root problem do you then go and invent the technologies to solve it. So my personal goal in life is to impact uh, 100 million patients by the age of 40. I'm almost getting here, so I don't have much time left. <laughs> and we have innovators in our ecosystem who are serial entrepreneurs and have done med tech you know, devices over and over and over with the same process and have been extremely successful. The program has actually changed my life. I've actually taken the same sort of like biodesign framework and applied it to China, uh, to Indonesia, right, to the Philippines, and even in what we are doing right now with Bottom B. You don't, you know, think about problems the same way once you've graduated from the program. It comes back to a very simple mission which is to help people. And I think if you remember that, at the end of the day, every product that we build, every product that we design, be it you know, in digital health or in med tech, the goal is always to help people. Biodesign is a very intense experience. Uh, you're there for one year or sometimes two years living with the same people day in and day out and sharing all these amazing experiences and all these intense experiences. So you end up creating this very tight community and very tight relationship with your, with your teammates. As a surgeon, we're trained to think one direction. And of course, I always thought that that was the only direction and the right direction. But being on a team working with mechanical engineers and PhD scientists, I realized how differently they approached problems compared to the way I was trained to approach problems. Surgeons, by necessity, are trained to be risk averse, um, not try anything that hadn't been tried before and, and had a lot of data behind it. And a PhD scientist is an experimenter by nature. Biodesign really stresses building a team that has as many of those perspectives as possible to try and come up with something brand new. It is kind of remarkable that every single year we take a group of folks who haven't met each other, they start at zero, they don't know what medical area they're going to be working on, and at the end of the year, we have one or two successful inventions that are going to go on and be companies. We were paired up by Biodesign initially, but then we found out as we talked about turning projects into companies that we had complementary skill sets. That really made us a good team to, to start something like this. We're treating BPH, which is benign prostatic hyperplasia or enlarged prostate. So as men grow older, their prostates enlarge and that enlargement causes obstruction of the prostatic urethra. It really struck me in the beginning when we were looking at this specific need how many patients had suffered from this and how bad it was for them and how little they were satisfied with the existing solutions. The goal is to have this technology accessible to millions of men around the world. We have all explicitly chosen to be in medtech 
because of that belief that you can make a difference in patient lives and even more tangibly, you know, in the lives of people we love and know. Ventilator associated pneumonia is one of the most common, most expensive, and most deadly infections that occur in the hospital. And when we were fellows in the Stanford Biodesign Program, we you know, identified that we could reduce the time on the ventilator and time in the ICU by preventing pneumonia. It's amazing how much has changed about the company, but still the, the North Star is still ex exactly where we thought it would be in, in biodesign, even almost seven years later. So healthcare advances thanks to innovation. You know, we as clinicians treat a patient at a time. When we talk about innovation, we're actually talking about helping many patients at the same time. One of the things that has happened as a result of uh, the biodesign program is that those people can then go in and train other people and create other programs that train other people. So that's what we did. We decided to create uh, a program based on the Stanford Biodesign Program, and we called it the Clinical Innovation and Design Program. You start with this very small program that then just expands into different parts throughout the world. Every fellow, to a certain degree, becomes an ambassador of the program. So all of a sudden, the impact is just exponential. I really appreciate Dr. Yock's drive to, to keep it an educational program, and he always says that the, the product is the students. The real product of the program is the people we've trained. I think it just opens up the doors of opportunity for anyone who goes through the program. You have the opportunity of a lifetime. You're in a protected environment. You can try anything that you want. Be bold. Don't be afraid of failing. Uh, at the end of the day, that's how you learn. He is so humble, and being an educator with that level of humility really instills the message in his students that there's still so much left to learn. I've actually known Paul since I was 23 years old. Having Paul be that mentor, even outside of the By Design Fellowship, has been such a blessing in my life. You know, Paul, thank you very much for everything that you've done. I don't think that any of us would actually be here had you not started the program and continued to be that source of inspiration for all of us. You have changed my life and the lives of all the alumni and millions of patients as a result. So thank you from the bottom of my heart for doing it. I anticipate that over the next 20 years, through the multiplier effect of many, many, many people around the world learning this process. And with the proper support, this program can continue to grow and evolve so that we can teach our trainees the most up-to-date principles that'll allow them to continue to change the world. There is nobody on the planet who is better suited to take over for the next 20 years of biodesign. He hates it when I say this, but Josh Schmackauer is, in my mind, the most talented, accomplished entrepreneur inventor out there in the health technology space. The fact that he's willing to leave a high-flying career in venture and come back to Stanford and do this is spectacular. I, I can't wait to see what, what he does with us.